out of my build video. Unlike the other videos, which are reviews, this is going to focus more on why I built a particular firearm in a certain way, and not a review on the product of its, itself, like if it's good to go, not good to go, uh, so on and so forth. That's what the reviews are for. This is more a, a theory on why I built something a certain way, or put together is probably a better word. I'm also, obviously, ad-libbing this and not pre-recorded, so hopefully this camera mic is worth a damn. I guess we'll find out. And just a quick disclaimer, this is obviously fit towards me and how I like my stuff set up, and you may find you completely disagree. Whatever, that's fine. All right, let's get started. So we'll start from this end uh, and then move our way left because the stuff on this end of the rifle is kind of irrelevant, so to speak. Everyone has their own thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, so stock, I just tried this one out because the, mag, the other Magpul stock that I usually use wasn't there, so I just got this one. It's got the QD swivel in the back, which is all I really care about. Whatever. K2 grip, I just prefer this grip angle over the other one, especially since my stocks are run a little closer. About, about this much, maybe a little closer sometimes. Uh, and I just find the K2 works nicely. Grip, no grip. Uh, or rather, grippy or not grippy, it doesn't really matter. You can also fit Skittles in here. Just kidding, I put batteries in here. The Skittles go in the stock. Inside the firearm is a Aero BCG that I stole from my other rifle because that now has an adjustable BCG because that's the one I run primarily suppressed. Lower, poverty pony, whatever. Uh, honestly, I probably would, should have done a different lower because it's the second time I've used one of these and I have issues with non-standard lower parts like Ambi mag release, it didn't work with this lower, and the Geisley Maritime Catch did not work with this lower. So, uh, I guess lesson learned if I want to put other stuff on like that. So, and the trigger was some, some trigger I pulled out of the bin that I had lying around. Uh, I believe it's a Rock River Arms two-stage trigger. I really like two-stage because uh, it lets you kind of set up, especially when zeroing, but long shots where you can kind of prep the trigger. That's kind of how I use my pistol as well. I really like prepping the trigger and then letting it go. And then when you're running it fast, you just treat it like a uh, single stage trigger and it works out well. I prefer the versatility of what I described versus a single stage trigger, which might feel and be a little more crisper, but uh, you don't have that ability to prep. But whatever, to each to their own. And be safety because I'm lefty. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on to the more personalized things, the stuff I did on this rifle to make it kind of fit me. So first off, the objective with this rifle was to create a I don't know how to call it, an assaulter style rifle. So I wasn't really planning on running it suppressed. This would be the rifle I grabbed when I quote unquote knew something was going down, had the ability to put hearing protection in, whatever you want to call it, right? Might be getting a little bit into the weeds. Um, so I knew it was, so I knew I'd be running it unsuppressed. I wanted a longer barrel for increased lethality and the ability to stretch out a little farther than a shorter gun. Uh, and the longer, oh, oh this is, this is not easy. The longer rail really allows me to get that, that forward purchase on it, right? And to really drive the gun harder. Oh, baby. So when talking about the other purchases on here, kind of view it within that vein of a quote-unquote assault air style setup. So first off, the optic. This uh, There's already a review out for this one. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that if you're interested in this optic at all and what I have to say about it. Um, so Main reasons I picked this, red dot, brightness levels, without batteries, ultra lightweight, and uh, incredibly clear glass. Also doesn't break the bank. Very well priced for what you're getting here. Far better than the other optics in that price bracket, in my opinion. At first I wasn't sure if I wanted to run a red dot up here or a variable power. I really like the idea of a red dot because unconventional positions all that kind of stuff works a lot better with flashlights in my opinion, which this would be used heavily with. Um, but eventually I tried this optic out and I really liked it because to me this optic is more of a, a red dot with a magnifier style than an actually full-blown variable power. You can't really stretch it out that far, but you do get that very pronounced reticle and the always um, red dot-like brightness with the tritium fiber optic combo. More details on this optic in that review kind of cover what I'm saying here into a little more detail and some of the issues I ran into with this. Once again, this isn't an ultra versatile variable power. There are much better ones for that. But for this design of a 
red light, red dot like analog, I actually prefer this over something like a Steiner uh, in this price bracket. Also, ignore the god-awful throw lever. It's like this $10 thing I got off of Amazon. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use a throw lever, so instead of spending 50 bucks and then deciding I didn't want it, I instead bought this to see if I liked it, because the reality is I'm gonna be leaving it at 1X and I don't really want this snag thing around on my rifle, snag hazard around my rifle. Um, and when I, need to, when I need to zoom in, I have time to do so, right? That's not a pressing thing necessarily. Buy a different throw lever though. This sucks. Next you'll notice there are no irons on this thing. That's because number one, I trust this optic not to break on me, but even if it did, I have an arrow mount and that's not coming off in any hurry. No cutie, right? I could have done off to the side ones, but once again, didn't really want to deal with that, especially with all this junk up front, right? So no backups. You're gonna get killed in the streets. Onto the rail. Um, I'll be real, I usually buy Midwest lightweight rails. Let me go get one of those. So usually I run something like this. This allows me to get a much better purchase and really get around it um, versus the much larger Geisley rail. But I wanted to give it a go, see what it was like. Uh, get out of the way. Oh, I knocked over everything, sweet Jesus. All right, so I gave this a go. There are some advantages to running a Geisley rail like this. Um, much thicker, the mounting method kind of is as robust as you imagine as those old Daniel Defense, uh, what are they called, wrist rails or something, with all the bolts in it. So a lot of people report thinner rails like the, uh, the BCM one or this mid -rail, Midwest one. Uh, you would flex it when you really cinch down with your sling or went off of a barricade or something, which would mess with aiming on a night vision device. That's not really a concern with me, but it is a thing. And honestly, I got this rail, rail really cheap. It looks cool. So I gave it a go and I'm not so disappointed or I'm not disappointed at all such that um, I want to swap it out for a Midwest rail. Though I do sometimes miss the Midwest rail, but it gets the job done. QD mount for my sling. I run all the way at the front, all the way in the back. That's just how I do it. Whatever. This rail is quite slick, right? It's very smooth. Um, which I guess looks good, but uh, I ended up slipping a lot when I really was trying to drive the rifle. So I threw one of these guys on, just so, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere with my hand. Onto the barrel, which is kind of the heart of this rifle and how I kind of built it. So it's a 13.7 uh, ballistic advantage barrel, and with the dead air flash hider, which I need for my suppressors, I get almost to exactly 16 inches, just a hair over with the shims I put in. So it's pinned and welded, so this is obviously a legal 16 inch barrel. There are some disadvantages, right? The handguard and all this stuff doesn't easily come off because this thing is affixed to it. Um, but I ended up really liking this, this shorter length. It, it, on paper, it honestly sounds like not much, right? You're going with a 16 inch barrel plus the flash hider, so another inch, inch and a half, um, versus thir uh, this thing, which is exactly 16 inches. But it ended up feeling really nice, or maybe it's just the looks, who knows? But I ended up liking this. I'm probably gonna stick with pinned and welded in the future. Probably just do 14.5, because 13.7 is a major pain in the butt to, to find in a manufactured rifle. Good lord. There, you can kind of see the clearance there. Really nice. Looks cool, and obviously pretty practical, because I got the rifle as short as humanly possible while staying within the 16 inch limit. All right, on to the accessories. So I have night vision and flashlight. The reason behind this is, this is as mentioned with the philosophy from earlier, kind of an assaulter gun. I'm probably not always gonna have my night vision. Uh, more often than not, I'm actually probably gonna be using the flashlight on this setup. If I'm gonna use my night vision or I know I'm gonna be using my night vision, I will bring a different gun. Specifically, this one, which is set up better for night use. But, uh, so that's why I have the flashlight as my primary nighttime um, illumination method, right? So we got a ProTac on here. I think this is the HLX. Yeah, so that's like the 1000 lumen one, and it gets the job done. Um, I haven't had any issues. I brace off the barricades. It gets crunched into the floor a lot. No problem so far. I guess at this point, I should probably mention what exactly I mean by a primary night vision gun. So... 
bringing this guy in. This is my primary night vision gun. I have, number one, a passive aiming method that I can look through with the night vision. Number two, the IR laser is IR laser and illuminator. The purse does not have an illuminator, further, disqualifi further disqualifying it from being a primary night vision device. I also have a tape switch for the laser and intentionally not the light. I don't want any white light NDs. That's why it's harder to access it and it isn't on a tape. I'm not running a dual switch here, but I can still access it. Well, over here, the white light is the primary illumination method and the laser is more of an afterthought. So that's kind of what I mean by primary night gun, primary day gun with the option of for white light. Regardless of uh, the fact that the light is my primary method, I do have a laser on here. It functions well as my backup with the viz mode. And then I have the IR mode should I happen to have night vision on me when I use this rifle. Maybe, maybe not kind of thing, right? But it's not the primary objective of this rifle to be run at night. And honestly, I could take this off and put irons on here or something and I would be just as comfortable. It just happens to be on this rifle because my other rifles don't really need it. Maybe I'll put it on my AK. And then finally, the sling. Uh, this is basically the sling you see me use on all of my rifles. Holy crap, it's tangled up. I don't know how this has happened. Now onto the sling. This is the VTAC sling. It's probably my th one of my favorite slings. If not my favorite slings, this is the one I buy a lot. You have quick adjustment, uh, which is really relevant if you run your slings in different configurations. I personally run it around my neck uh, most of the time and then sling it under the arm when I want to be able to stow the weapon or I'm hiking or whatever. And then um, I can also really cinch it down in a rapid fashion, which I've pre-set up the lengths for. Uh, this sling is on wrong, which I've pre-set up so I can really cinch it down and go for a more precise shot without being supported off of everything, just using the sling. Alrighty, I believe that's actually it. There's, you know, it's an AR. Everyone's seen an AR before, right? This whatever. That was just kind of my philosophy with building out this rifle. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think if you like this, uh, I wouldn't call it tabletop because we're on the floor, but tabletop style for describing the parts of the, uh, the rifle. Uh, for most of my other videos, I'm obviously still going to do that voiceover scripted thing, but for this kind of context, I kind of like more of an ad lib style. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Got a couple videos coming up in the future as well. I think AK is coming up next. Fred convinced me to buy an AK, so I'm giving that a run. Uh, I'm going full commie mode. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys around.